This week, I go Viking and Gurkha, a heartwarming story from Tacoma, and 10 really cool folders I should carry more often. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment this week was from LD667 or Elda667, who says, appreciate your take and comments on a knife I've been curious about. And he's talking about the Ramlock Stitch from Microtech. It's just a wee bit too large for my liking, but I wouldn't have known that without your comparisons and commentary. Thanks very much. Well, I have to say thank you very much, Man, does that make me feel good because of all the videos we do here, uh, including this show, the my close-up videos uh, and commentary on knives are, are the least viewed. And uh, it's nice to see that, um, well, that my commentary on specific knives and those comparisons uh, aren't falling on deaf ears and that uh, they're actually making a difference in someone's purchasing habits. Thank you, Elda, for letting me know, uh, 667. Thank you, everyone, uh, for watching and commenting this past week, uh, especially on the shorts. I'm very much enjoying putting out the shorts, and it seems like people like watching them. So uh, I do appreciate that. All right, let us now get to a pocket check. Speaking of Microtech, I uh, had this little beauty in my pocket today. Not so little, though they just came out with a small version of this, smaller. This is the Microtech SOCOM Bravo, uh, the first uh, overseas-produced Microtech ever. Uh, two years ago, they started this partnership with Reich Knives, a knife company in China known for their super precision yet very uh, artistic and sculptural uh folding knives and you know they, they make the knives that look like uh, um, like insects and and uh, skeletons and all sorts of crazy stuff uh, but not cheesy we're not talking gas station knives we're talking highly highly uh, precise and well-made knives well this seemed to be the perfect company to put together the socom bravo socom bravo has long been a uh, a knife coming out of microtech that takes the SOCOM ethos, the SOCOM design, uh, which we all know and love as a very, very sturdy and stout uh, tactical knife, and turns it into a bit more of a sturdy and stout art tactical knife. And uh, every year they would come out with a, a sort of a new uh, configuration with materials and such. And uh, eventually it was too much. And so they shipped the production of that knife overseas. Uh, that's the story in a nutshell, as far as I know. Look at that jimping. Incredible jimping. Incredible design on this knife. And when I got it, uh, I was really chasing after this knife. I got it on the second run. And then I, I hardly carried it because I have to say this pocket, this uh, pocket clip, though beautiful, uh, is a bit of a buzzkill. It is so tight. And um, I'm I got to say, I'm kind of squeamish about bending it, uh, but I just got to get a screwdriver under there with some with a rag around it and just bend it out. I just don't want to mess it up. Anyway, uh, a very beautiful knife that recently I have uh, been grateful and happy that I picked up when I did, because now I am really carrying it and loving it. OK, next up in my front left and right, it kind of goes back and forth all day, uh, is the Jack Wolf Knives Midnight Jack. It's the new one. I swear, best walk and talk in the entire business uh, is from Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, QSP does an awesome job. You know, uh, there's a, an occasional case that does well. Of course, we know uh, uh, Great Eastern Cutlery. Did I say them? What did I say first? Anyway, oh, I said QSP. GEC, of course, has some real, real incredible knives. But the Jack Wolf Knives have spoiled me in terms of fit, finish, design and this right here i've also been spoiled because i got this from ben um and so thank you very much ben uh one of the new things about the new jack wolf knives midnight jack is that giant sharpening choil 
the sharpening choil before was already generous, uh, but now um, on these second runs, they're coming out even larger. Uh, so you get even more life out of that high, uh, full height hollow ground blade. Uh, this one, of course, has a twill carbon fiber. <laughs> I swear the camera just wants to focus on that SOCOM. There you go. Beautiful quill, uh, twill carbon fiber, triple fluted bolsters. It is a Barlow coffin handle sleeve board style. I know that's two different things, but you usually say coffin handle for a fixed blade, uh, but it's got that sleeve board shape in that it's symmetrical and widens towards the pommel, uh, yet it has these facets here, which makes it a coffin shape. Um, that blade is, uh, it's also something they've been doing new on the new Jack Wolf knives runs are, look at that, beautifully uh, like high polished swedge or at least satin swedge and then a hand rub satin here um, on the main part of the blade. Long pull nail neck, really, really nice knife. And um, the different versions of this, there's a jig titanium, uh, there's this crazy um, colorful resin, two carbon fibers, uh, and each one of them has a sort of different treatment on the blade. Uh, there's PVD coating. Uh, their first stone wash ever appears on one of the, the new um, Midnight Jacks. And then you have the, um, the, the belt satin and then this hand rub satin. So uh, just a, oh, wow, look at this double carbon fiber. That's a rare thing. I didn't even realize that until I'm looking at it. That never happens because, you know, I'm not a huge carbon fiber fan, but these two knives here, um, I really do like it. Maybe I have to stop saying that because I keep making exceptions. There's one type of carbon fiber I can't stand, and that's like the first kind that came out, just the basket weave. I, you rarely see that anymore, so maybe I should just stop with that. Okay, next, in my waistband, I love this knife. Um, and it's sort of got this, I got a new Craftsman. So I have my knives now. They all have breathing room. I can see them. I had a drawer full of knives that I love very much that were just kind of heaped on one another. And it's like I didn't see this one for a while. Uh, this is the uh, Aaron Bieber Knives, AB Knives 302. Um, just a, an incredible EDC uh, fixed blade knife. This one, of course, I opted for that gorgeous Sukamaki wrap. It's got the white ray skin down there beneath the uh, that wrap. I love the Sukamaki wrap because of those alternating uh, peaks and valleys there when you turn it on its uh, spine and look down at it. That just gives you incredible grip. And, it, and, it, and it, it's no wonder that samurai uh, had that on their on the handles of their swords. It gives you it gives you superior grip. Uh, this blade is very interesting to me. Oh, by the way, um, I found out at Blade Show when meeting Aaron, uh, that he and I went to the same art school just at different times. But uh, that was a kind of a cool coincidence. It was an intense place and it's no wonder his, um, uh, a talent like him came out of that school. Uh, well, that's sort of a backhanded compliment to myself, I, which I didn't mean. But in any case, this is like a clip point Warncliffe to me. You know, you've got a, though it's got a belly, so it's not a worn cliff and it doesn't have a continuous curve from the spine. So maybe it's a, it's like a small sax. I don't know what this is, but it's such a cool blade shape and it's very sharp, very thin, very slicey. Oh, that's my condensation from my hand there. Let me wipe this down a little bit. And uh, po pointy and beautiful, but also very light and carries on the belt. I think I'm going to switch this up to horizontal scout carry on the front uh, like I do my T-Kells because that's how I carried this initially, um, though it goes very well, appendix carry. Um, such an excellent knife. This is this is shaping up to be a beautiful lineup, I got to say, <laughs> if I do say so myself. And then to spoil it uh, is the blue g10 no i'm just kidding i love this knife this was my emotional support knife today uh the cold steel con um since uh, as i mentioned i've been sort of rearranging um the the collection with the addition of a new tool chest to to hold uh it's it's growing numbers uh, i found the con in i didn't find it it was out there in the open in my cold steel folder drawer but it's one i i pay rare attention to and i love that Tonto blade. It's such an acute um, 
pointy Tonto blade. This was given to me by the great and powerful Jimmy Slash. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Uh, he's given me three knives. Um, his own chopper, which is quite a, a pricey and uh, exclusive knife, which I'm very grateful for. He gave me this, and then he gave me the uh, um, my Formax, uh, uh, Formax Scout. Anyway, uh, this beautiful thing I had on me because people think that... Uh, People think that lockbacks are not fidgety, but to me, a uh, triad locks can be quite fidgety because Andrew Demko's designs, he always designs in a one-handed close. And by that, I mean, on all of his designs, you put your finger forward in the choil and then let the blade drop. It will always, your finger will always engage with the Ricasso and not the sharp blade. So that you can't say that about spider codes and uh, you can say that about some spider codes, but um, most back locks don't have that. But the triad not only gives you superior strength, but it gives you superior uh, fidgetability for a back lock. All right. This is what I had on me today. What did you have on you? Drop in the comments below. Let me know. Always good to get inspiration that way. Are you carrying fixed blades? And uh, if you do. Which ones do you carry and how do you carry? That is a an area of interest to me. Uh, that one of my one short that's gotten the most views ever, over a million and some, um, always gets some real snarky comments. And it's how I carry my fixed blade. It's when, when I carried it over here in the three o'clock position. And just today I was looking and someone informed me uh, that that's not how you hold a knife for defensive purposes. And I was holding the knife like this. So be warned, don't hold your knife like this for defensive purposes. It's not time tested or proven. All right, coming up, let's uh, let's get to knife news. But before we do, I want to show you this uh, really cool. Uh, it's a tooting of the of my horn, but I want to forewarn you of something really cool coming down the pike. And it's a collaboration between myself and Tim Kell Knives, and it's called the Agent 001. And uh, this is a a resin print, a resin 3D print of it. Uh, this resin 3D printing is amazing, I gotta say. Um, it has a, wait, let me get up the light. It has a different, uh, a different more uh, tough and robust feel, uh, this resin does. But this is a double-edged belt-worn knife that um, is going into production soon. I mean, the steel has been ordered and uh, is going to be cut out shortly. Uh, double-edged fighter. A fighter is an asymmetrical double-edged knife, as I define it, like that, bayonet ground. Uh, you got jimping here. You've got this uh, handle with the hook. It's meant to be, I'm, I will be carrying this like I carry my uh, Night Stalker, which is a ringed knife. So it's always kind of ring out. I always grab it like this off of my belt horizontally and I have it in hand uh, ready to use. And uh, I usually never have to use it in this reverse grip because unlike that commenter said, that is a fighting grip. So I turn it around and use the knife how I need to use it. Uh, but I like to have it on the belt horizontally. Um, this of course could be worn any way you, you carry a small fixed blade knife, even in the pocket. Um, but my preferred mode and how I designed it is, is for this. So I'm very excited. We're making a few tweaks, adding some jimping. Uh, this handle uh, is um, has the spirit of the handle design I sent uh, Tim. Tim tweaked it. And of course, it'll, has, it'll have his grenade texturing on it. Um, so his handle, my blade, or our handle, my blade, his knife, uh, production. I'm very, very excited. If you like Tim Kell knives and you think that's a cool design, keep your eyes peeled for the Agent 001. He has already designed three other blades to go on this handle, the Agent 002, 3, and 4. He's sending me those uh, also to check out and show off. So very, very exciting for me. And hopefully for you and the T. Kell knives uh, fan base. All right, still to come, we're going to check out uh, Knife Life News. Before we do, I'd like to uh, urge you to check us out on Patreon. Um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to um, hear from these great designers and makers that we talk to, but get a little extra. We offer uh, exclusive interview extras. We offer the chance to win a knife every month um, and some other things. So go over to Patreon and check it out. 
it helps support the show. And um, something I, 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 I do must say, it's not a life sentence. You decide you want to support us um, for a few months. That's great. That's what people did when we were um, giving away that, uh, that very special knife from Dirk Pinkerton. Um, so consider us on Patreon. All right. That said, uh, let us, uh, let us roll out of here, shall we? Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Combat Africa from RMJ Tactical is back in stock. This fixed blade features hollow ground 80 CRV2 tool steel with a tungsten Cerakote finish. Jack Wolf is bringing us a new round of premium slip joints. The Midnight Jack has a coffin-style handle built on integral titanium liners and bolsters with a blade of hollow ground CPM S90V and the Spyderco Stretch 2 XL Lightweight. The lockback gives it a sturdy lockup, and the clip has four positions available for any carrying preference. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time, theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. First up in Knife Life News, one I'm really excited about. Uh, this is a knife coming out from Rosecraft Blades, coming out real shortly. They haven't said exactly when, but it's called the Obed Creek Bow Trapper. Obed Creek Bow Trapper. So keeping with the name, uh, keeping with the naming um convention and sticking to creeks and rivers uh this thing look at that okay so the bow trapper is a an original pattern by andy armstrong um, unlike his recent uh releases where he's been um influenced by sheffield makers uh like joseph allen and sons and others with the lusahatchee jack and the cane creek barlow he, this is one of his own a pattern of his own device and I, we've seen we've seen this in the bow trapper we saw this in um uh from rough rider before he left rough rider uh, we saw the bow trapper over there that was pretty cool with the upswept blade that looks a little bit like some of the uh trappers single bladed trappers he's put out recently but anyway the bow trapper it's like a pistol grip and it, it's got that curve down uh, different from like a sow belly, which is sort of a symmetrical dip. This has more of a pistol grip uh, and a widening uh, towards the uh, the back, the back three quarters. Uh, beautiful bolsters there fluted up front. You got a, a, a drop point with a swedge that reminds me a little bit of, say, a sod buster. Uh, 3.1 inches D2 blade steel. Dark green micarta looks so cool. It does not come through uh, on the pictures I've been seeing, um, but dark green micarta with a skull shield. I love that skull shield. Now I'm saying all the time how I do not get into the skull motif. The, uh, the you just don't. I just don't like it. I, I especially dislike the appropriation of the of the um, Punisher um, skull that you see everywhere ubiquitously. I hate that, uh, but what I do like is the skull on this because a, it doesn't have the jaw and B it looks more piratey or it looks more, uh, uh, like from a catacomb, it looks more ancient or something, uh, less like, you know, uh, you know, less like the other skull motif I'm talking about. So anyway, I'm uh, very excited about this one. Uh, cause as you know, uh, I, I really am very fond of the Rosecraft, uh, slip joints. So this one is very exciting. And then there's another one coming out, a, uh, a rifle, a, a gun stock Jack coming up. That one to me, uh, I don't think I need to get that one. Uh, but this bow trapper, I most certainly do. That's called the Obed Creek bow trapper. Keep your eyes peeled. It's coming soon. Speaking of coming soon uh, from CRKT, now they just dropped three sort of surprise releases. And uh, the only place I've seen them in person is on Neve's Knives. Uh, he got three of them and he was showing them off. Uh, two of them are the Alan Foltz Ritual. You remember the Alan Foltz Ritual, the, the white micarta with the blue bolsters and that giant uh, four and a half inch upswept Persian blade. Well, they came out with a small version of that. Uh, a lot of people like that design, but that that big three three and a half inch, uh, four and a half inch blade was too much to swing. Well, this is out now. That's a, a three. What is that? That's a three and a half inch or a three and a third inch um, 
upswept uh, swedged scimitar blade. It's so it is really cool, I gotta say. Um, and a beautiful handle. Uh, this is uh, a, a I, I would say since the minimalist and all of the different minimalist uh, uh, versions, this is the most striking Allen Foltz design. Um, I, I think ever. I think it's it's really cool. But anyway, these small versions here come in two different uh, styles. One is the standard version on top. Uh, that's with 14C28N burlap micarta and bronze steel bolsters. And then this premium one right here. Look at that. That's got Damascus blade. It almost looks like to me like a San Mai Damascus. Is that a thing? Uh, but anyway, it's got a Damascus blade and bolster. So that bolster is a Damascus steel. And then it's got this coarse textured blue and black carbon fiber. Very, very handsome. And and I believe the um, uh, the top, the standard one is assisted. And then the second one down here is the obverse. This one, Jared uh, Knee went bonkers over. He said like, and 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 well listen why we all know that crkt can build a good knife we also know that they um are willing to go out on a limb with designs and they're they work collaboratively with designers more than probably anyone else and have for longer than probably anyone else uh but the cheesy materials and the assisted open have always uh stopped people from from diving in but this is a premium uh, knife. It's called the Obverse. That's a 3.3 inch M390 blade, super hollow, very deeply hollow ground, almost full height uh, there. And it's a coping blade. Uh, people are calling it a sheep's foot. I'm calling it a coping blade. Uh, look at look at the steepness of that uh, drop, that straight drop to the the point. To me, that's a coper. Uh, it's on bearings. It's got fantastic action. Uh, it's got uh, titanium bolsters. Uh, the weird thing to me is the screw in the bolster, but you know, whatever. Uh, and a very, very ergonomic handle. Um, so this is an exciting thing. This is kind of what we've all wanted from CRKT for a long time. And so I'm glad to see that, that they are jumping into this territory. Also, it's like only 500 of them are being made coming out soon. Made in America. And it's only like 250 or something like that, 275, 250. I can't remember the price. It wasn't listed in this article, but I remember Jared mentioning it. So the that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's what we want. We want knives that cost as much or less than Riot knives, but have all of the same ingredients. Let's let's hope the fit and finish are there, according to uh, our trusted voices. It is. So that's what we want here in the United States. So very, very excited to see that from CRKT. All right, last uh, of the new knives I'm gonna talk about is the Olamic Silhouette. You know Olamic. Uh, they are a premium um, small batch production custom. I don't know, it's like every knife they make is slightly different. So I guess we could call them a sort of a custom knife house. Um, well, They've been known for their folders. Now they're going to be known for their chef's knives because they have this incredible looking chef's knife coming out. Or actually, it's not coming out. It's already available. Uh, this is a seven and a half inch Magna Cut kitchen knife. Seven and a half inch is a little small uh, for a chef's knife, but um, it's it's a great all around utility size, I would say. Um, so uh, yeah, Magna Cut Steel. Uh, this is something that we're not, we haven't seen too much yet in kitchen knives, but it's a, uh, it's an, it's low hanging fruit because of its toughness. Uh, kitchen knives have to be tough because they're getting banged into stuff. A uh, lots of times metal stuff, but it also has to be uh, stain resistant and, or, and you know resistant to um, corrosion. And we know that Magna Cut is supremely resistant to corrosion. Um, as it's being adopted, it's being drawn into the uh, the salt series uh, over there at Spyderco for its um, corrosion resistance. So a great choice for um, for a kitchen knife. Heavily contoured and sleek handle. I think it's a really nice looking handle. It would also look uh, looks like it would be great on a tactical uh, knife. But uh, it's got this sort of psychedelic custom carbon fiber on there that I really like. And it comes with a leather leather sheath, uh, which is cool too. Now, the one thing you can't tell from the pictures is the geometry. Of course, a uh, uh, kitchen knife needs to have geometry, uh, very, very, very thin uh, 
uh, geometry to it, a very thin grind to be a successful knife. But no doubt Olamic has been making and grinding blades for a long time. And the ones that I've experienced, and that's only been at their booth at Blade Show, have been exquisite. Uh, so I have no doubt that this is too. So this is a cool one. This is an exciting chef's knife uh, release to me uh, for sure. Okay, one last story here in Life Knife News, uh, and that is from Tacoma, Washington. This just warmed the cockles of my heart. Uh, I got this from Knife Magazine. If you don't know Knife Magazine, you got to check out Knife Magazine. I mean, I'm always talking about Knife News, which is great, but Knife Magazine is also great. And on the weekends, they have this open thread with news stories and just different stuff. And so I'm just going to read from this article here um, about this news story. Uh, Tacoma, Washington. All right. Now we also, well, let me just, uh, I'll save the editorial for later. When a Tacoma uh, when a Tacoma convenience store owner was threatened with a knife during a robbery last week, he got the best of the suspect, defending himself with an even bigger knife. Tacoma Police Department officers responded to the Salina One Market near South 11th Street and South Yakima Avenue on February 5th, just before 8 p.m. for reports of a robbery. Naif Kataman, who owns the Salina One Market, said the suspect pointed a knife at him and said, listen, this is a holdup. The suspect allegedly demanded Kataman open the till and give him money. Kataman recalled he replied, I don't think so, buddy, before he picked up a machete. Surveillance video from inside the store shows Kataman waving the machete at the suspect. The owner said the robber fell backward and he held the suspect with the machete to wait for the police to arrive. I just want to scare him, Kataman said. I don't want to hurt him. And um, yeah, man, I love that story. Uh, the guy, uh, the robber doesn't seem to be the most uh, spry. The robber doesn't seem to be the most, um, uh, you know, aggressive and in shape. Um, and uh, so I am so glad that this gentleman, uh, uh, Mr. Kataman, didn't get hurt. And I am so glad that he had the cojones and the preparation to have that machete and pull it out. And I'm glad that it worked out how he, how it did. I mean, if he could hold uh, the guy with the machete until the cops arrived, obviously, um, you know, the, the robber was a little bit compromised. Um, and that's not to rain on Mr. Cotterman's parade, uh, but it is to say one thing. I, I Brandishing is, brandishing and not using is a, is a tricky thing. I, I was, um, when I lived in Philadelphia, I know I've told this story before, but uh, I had a little uh, convenience store uh, owned by some uh, Korean family that I'd go to all the time, every day, a couple of times a day to get my coffee in the morning, to get my ramen at night. Yeah, it was those days. Uh, and once I was in there and these young guys uh, uh, were stealing stuff and, and you know, making making a scene and um, and the guy behind the counter just pulled out his gun and showed it to them and then like held it down and like went to put it back. And, and, uh, boy, that, that did not get the right reaction uh, that he was expecting. Anyway, these young, these young, uh, hoodlums, <laughs> uh, threatened him. Oh yeah, we're coming back and we're going to kill you and all this. So, you know, you, you gotta be careful about when and how you brandish. Um, you know, uh, hopefully Mr. Cotterman was ready to take it all the way a and B he probably may have recognized the person from the neighborhood also may have recognized that he didn't have to chop the guy's hands off. Uh, so just, just a word to the wise, be careful if you have to brandish, uh, because if you do be ready to go all the way. All right. That said, uh, I want to, um, well, let's just get to the state of the collection. Before we do, I want to mention uh, that we do not only this show, but we do Thursday Night Knives. That's uh, tomorrow. <laughs> every As you, as you, this is being released, that's Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. We do the Sunday interview show, uh, which is really that that's the 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 heart and soul of the Knife Junkie podcast, the interview shows, the interesting people we talk to, like recently Michael Janich and uh, Bob Terzuola. Uh, but we don't just talk to the big wigs. We also talk to people who are up and coming, just anyone who's making knives that fascinate me. Um, so uh, be sure to check out all of those shows. All right, coming up, we are going to get to the state of the collection and check out some new knives coming through my hot little hands right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast.
The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp crenulated bezel, and built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So in the opener, I said I go from Viking to Gurkha this week, and that's because uh, I got a sweet mail call. This doesn't even fit. Um, two knives that I have been wanting for a long time uh, I got this week. I, I, I've been less ravenous in my buying. I've been doing more saving. And these two are, are um, well, I, I'm very happy I saved for them. And they're both affordable as far as that goes. This first one is the Chieftain Sacks from Cold Steel. And I'm going to do a flyby because uh, we'll probably have to go to the main camera at some point. This is a big one. It's got a 13 inch blade and it's a broke back sax. So that this is the reference. This is the broke back reference right here. This it almost resembles or it sort of resembles a buoy. A fighting uh, knife right here with the, you know, the only thing you would need to make this a Bowie knife would be a swedge. And uh, other than that, it's got that long clip point tapered shape. But it also really has the, I'm going to put the sheath aside. The sheath is great. Leather, and it's got these danglers so you can dangle it from the belt in that traditional uh traditional way. Now I, I say Viking, but this knife, uh, the sax was used all through Northern Europe and Western, uh, Northwestern Europe, I guess you would say, uh, and got its name from the Saxony, you know, so, um, you know, in England and Great Britain, this knife was everywhere, but we know that the Vikings used uh, knives like this and then uh, short swords that also look like this called the Scramasax, which was larger, uh, which Cold Steel makes a version of with beautiful Damascus steel uh, and an incredible hilt that I would love to get, but it's like very expensive. It's like 500 bucks or something. Uh, so this is really uh, um, light and lively, as they say. I'm going to go over to the main camera, Jim, because it's kind of hard to. So right here. Let me put this right here. Uh, this knife is very lively in hand. Uh, it is a big knife and a big blade, but the weight, it's balanced. Let's see. It's balanced about an inch in front of the, about an inch in front of the guard. I don't want it to fall. About there. And this pommel here, this heavy brass pommel and a very uh, nice wood handle. I think that's uh, that's stained. I'm not sure what kind of wood that is. Uh, but the handle and the weight of the pommel really keep the tip moving really lightly, uh, kind of like a sword. This feels a little bit like a sword and where where it's weighted and um, like it doesn't have a choppiness to it at all. It has more of that sort of fluidity to it. I don't know what I'm trying to get at. But uh, and if you look at the handle, you'll see it is engraved in a very intricate pattern. And that really adds to the grippiness. So your the fat of your hand really sinks into all those little uh, patterns there. It's also an attractive pattern, as are the uh, the patterns engraved on the pommel and the guard. So kind of a blend of um, primitiveness, and but I, I think the blade looks kind of primitive. That's what I like about a sax. Um, in terms of the aesthetics, but then the handle here looks um, a little bit more ornamental. So it's sort of a blend of um, civilized and primitive. Dig it. Uh, and I really like the sheath. And this has been my, uh, you know, I always have a large fixed blade next to me at night as I relax with my wife. And, um, you know, just in case someone bursts through the room and, uh, <laughs> and uh and i don't shoot them uh, i would stab them with that so um yeah that's been that's been the late night tv uh watching knife this is another one right here that i have been really wanting since blade show 2020 
22, I believe. Uh, this is, or 20, I guess it was 23. This is the Kukri from Spartan Blades designed by Bill Harzi. Now I'm going to show the sheath first. The sheath is, uh, I have mixed emotions about the sheath. For the Kukri, it's great. And what I mean by that is uh, it's got a straight line here so it can drop straight in without having to curve too much. So when you're standing and this is hanging from your belt, you can basically line this up and drop it and it'll drop right into, into place. It's got this unique release here, thumb release that is spring loaded and you have to push it forward and then it uh, releases from that first jimp notch and you can pull it out. So that's the way this locks in. It doesn't lock in um, using the contours of the blade and and the uh, Ricasso like a traditional molded plastic, thermo molded plastic like Kydex sheath does. This is fine for me for the Kukri because this is not the sort of knife that I personally uh, would draw in reverse grip. Um, unlike my friend Steve Price who could draw that in reverse grip and 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 slice a falling piece of paper. That's not how I uh, think of a Kukri, uh, but that is how I think of a fighter. And the the Harzi fighter, uh, which is more like a K-bar knife, comes with the same sheath, same style sheath with the release, which means to me, how do you reverse draw it? So that is one thing about the mechanical nature of this uh, sheath lock that I, I don't, that gives me trepidation, but let's talk about the blade. This thing, this is made by K-Bar. This is part of their, uh, part of Spartan Blades professional grade line. Uh, so what that means, this is sort of like uh, the George Raider dagger. It's in that same line. It's it's more affordable. Uh, this knife was under 150 bucks. I think this was $130, which for what you're getting is incredible. Chief, uh, chief among all of that is the Harsey design. Uh, Bill Harsey is uh, definitely in my top five designers of knives out there. And he's been designing knives for elite warriors for years and years and years. Uh, I don't know if starting with, but uh, um, most notably in the beginning, I should say, uh, for CRK, uh, for Chris Reeve Knives, who was making uh, knives for various Green Beret groups as graduation knives. Um, so uh, Bill Harsey is an amazing guy, amazing designer. Also a lumberjack, comes from a lumberjack family, which is so cool to me. Anyway, uh, this knife here takes the Kukri blade and straightens it out a little bit without losing um, that profound recurve. The recurve on this is really pretty amazing. Uh, reminds me a little bit of a um, an early cold steel kukri machete, one of those uh, straightened out ones, where you can use this point because it's basically centered. It's aligned with the center. You can use the point um, in a more traditional way, I should say. Now, kukris are great for thrusting. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're really great for thrusting. It's sort of like a pistol grip uh, shaped knife, a pistol grip knife. You don't even have to cant your wrist to get the point where you want it to go. Kukri kind of works the same way, except it's up on a different plane. Um, and you can do some devastating thrusting damage, especially with how that blade will saw into something as you push forward. Um, this one, uh, you're going to get a lot of that same action, but you're also going to get some of the utility that you're more used to with a straight blade. So someone who goes from uh, years and years of using, say, a K-bar or a um, or a Bowie uh, could pick this up and get all of the benefits of a Kukri, i.e. that deep, deep recurve and the sturdy, sturdy blade uh, and the chopping and that kind of stuff, but still have uh, the point and the edge in a, in a familiar orientation. Nice swedge on the top, very stout um, saber grind here. That's a flat grind coming up. Quarter inch. Uh, this, unlike the Chieftain Sax, this is more weighted towards the front, though the balance still is about an inch from the guard uh, where it should be for a fighting knife. So you do feel that, uh, chow, it's sharp as hell too. You do feel that uh, choppiness from the big belly and the mass up front, uh, but you still get the balance of a fighter, you know, right in front of the guard there. Whoops. 
So uh, <laughs> the question is this a, uh, I, I keep seeing people, when this first came out, people were positing the question, is this a fighting kukri or is this a bushcraft kukri? And I, I say, I say it would probably be awesome at both. I've, I haven't seen anyone fight with it, uh, but I can tell you from shadow boxing with it, it feels great in hand. And I've seen uh, uh, plenty of people like Scab and Gideon's Tactical take that thing and uh, really, really uh, put it through its paces. So uh, I'm very happy to have this uh, K-Bar made bill harsey designed uh, spartan blades kukri look at that like this is one of the most beautiful hilts you'll ever see with that jimping and this and by the way that reminds me of the gerber rock anyone remember that knife that was a cool knife also designed by bill harsey all right let me put this away and as i do i want to tell you about some t-shirts we got uh, Jim is constantly at work in his workshop coming up with new t-shirt designs. And the t-shirt, the featured t-shirt of the week is this and this and right here, uh, sharp wit, sharper blades. Um, and this raises an interesting question or not question. This raises an interesting point. We don't want to be just ravenously collecting knives. We also want to be ravenously, ravenously sharpening our minds and making sure that we're reading and that we're you know listening to interesting people who are talking about interesting things and not just focused on knives all the time because you do that you learn a little history you widen your scope and uh you're gonna learn more about what cool knives there are out there from different cultures and from uh, different points of view that you can collect so sharp wit sharper blades i, I love it thank you jim this is an awesome uh uh, t-shirt featured t-shirt of the week. We're going to start showing these off more often because I'll tell you what, if you go to the knifejunkie.com slash shop, which, which uh, Jim just pulled off the screen, but if you go to knifejunkie.com slash shop, there are pages and pages of his designs, uh, like about 50, about 50 designs of different t-shirts, knife themed t-shirts, uh, that Jim has come up with. They are awesome. And, uh, so go there and check them out. All right. This this would be my camera turn in the news. So now we're going to get to 10 cool folders. I really should carry more often. Now, this all came up because I got the new Craftsman chest and it's bigger than the other. Uh, so I have a uh, now I have a lot of room for knives and wow, it gets filled up quickly. And as I was going through my stuff and kind of giving them all room to breathe on their on their drawers so I could open it up and see what I have. I saw some things that uh, I know I had and and I became blind to, even though I see them every day. I'm like these knives I should carry more often. First one, <coughs> pardon me, <clears throat> is the Delica Warncliffe. So this this is my Spyderco Delica Warncliffe. This was a gift. Let me, let me uh, wipe that down. This was a gift from... Uh, Oh, how many years back was that? Uh, this was a little, little while back, and uh, but I took the um, the uh, um, GFN handle. Let me. I got, I'm sorry, I got to knock this light down. It's a little blinding. All right, there we go. Let me start over again. Uh, okay, so I got this uh, knife. This is the Warncliffe um, serrated. I love that serrated blade, um, but I I took off the GFN handle scales and put on some um uh smoky mountain knife works titanium aftermarket scales and it really um made this an even more appealing knife to carry now i love the lightweight of my other delica which has just the frn handle uh, but something about beefing it up with the titanium just knowing that to me this is a great small defensive knife in the if you approach things the way uh, michael janich would you could use this to great effect. Uh, I love the spidey edge. I love the spidey spider coserations. And so uh, this one is great. And then, and then just to make it even more appealing, I got the deep carry, uh, small deep carry uh, MXG gear clip for this. So this is a knife I should definitely carry more off. And I'm going to leave these ones out so we can gawk at them, take a look at them. Uh, next up is one that I was about to give away. And Man, I, I took it out of the giveaway pile <laughs> uh, because 
it's a really, really great knife and I have it and I feel like I would regret giving this away. Uh, I think I need more time with it. This is the Pelican uh, from K Max Rom, the, the designer Jonathan Renaudin from France, uh, made by Concept, who is just, man, they make some of the best. I love their folders. Uh, but this just has exquisite, exquisite thumb stud slash bearing action and, um, and, really nice ergonomics to this titanium handle and then that blade i love the big swale that's a that's sort of a signature to k max rom designs you got that swale there for the thumb very thin and sharp behind the edge this is just a great knife and it also comes in a sheep's foot that's also quite uh, attractive and looks very useful very nice clip Everything about this I love. It's just the size has kept me from carrying it more often. And uh, this is something that as I mature and uh, become, well, as I mature and uh, as I carry all these other knives on me, like a fixed blade, and like I got to start allowing myself to carry smaller, some of these really cool smaller folders like this one. Uh, this was a gift also. This is the Perpetua. Um, from mass drop and uh schwartz here uh it's got a ridiculous ridiculous edge here um okay so what is this this is a hollow ground um sheep's foot blade very much uh reminds me a bit of the of his overlander fixed blade which i think is really cool um and it's got uh, Nitro V, G10, everything. It's got the. It's made by Millet Knives. It's got a great um, bar lock. It was like the first one after the uh, after the Axis Lock patent expired. They were the first ones to jump on this. Uh, TJ Schwartz and uh, Mass Drop and Millet Knives, and they did a great job with it. Three and a quarter inches. That's another size that is one that I'm less apt to carry because I don't know. I guess just because I start when I started, it was on four inch blades way back with the with the Vaquero and and the the folders back then. Everything was four inches. The the early tactical knives. And I think it's like a guy trapped in whatever his you know. I'm still wearing my '90s jeans. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not, but. Um, it's sort of that fashion thing. So anyway, TJ Schwartz, what a great designer. He's now doing his own stuff out of house uh, with the, his CNC machine, killing it with his fixed blades. And I, I'm not sure if he's doing folders yet out of his garage or out of his uh, home shop, I should say. He had to build it around his new CNC. Uh, next up, this is a recent purchase, and I'm really surprised. I Recent meaning within the last 365 days. I'm surprised I haven't carried it more often and I have to get it uh, back into the rotation. I think maybe I got this when I got a bunch of other things and it was eclipsed, but this is the Snowdy, Mike Snowdy designed Artisan Accelerator, a big knife. And that's why I'm surprised I didn't carry it more often um, because it's big and it's attractive and it's a great cutter and it feels great in hand. So I just need to... Um, get this back in. I might just dye those handle scales. That tends to reignite the magic for me or ignite a magic that wasn't there before. Something about these handle scales stick in my craw. I think it's the fact that no matter how much oil you try and darken them with, it, it just doesn't take. Sometimes I feel like the grinder leaves the, or, or whatever is, yeah, the grinder leaves the micarta on the epoxy more on the epoxy than on the dyed fabric and <clears throat> i don't know if that's actually a thing but it intuitively feels like a thing so this is a knife that's up for a dye job for sure um and then i think with with that it will be something i gravitate towards more but i love that blade uh, this is one of the rare cases where the harpoon is the thing makes it um and this is ARRPM9, that's right, because it's artisan and they have their cool proprietary steel. So very nice blade. And it comes, if you're interested in that knife, it comes in a variety of um, configurations to include a knife center exclusive with a frag titanium. That's pretty cool. Next one, the Vision FG from Civivi. Uh, just a really unique design, something that's 
uh, very appealing to me due to the fact that the designer, uh, Snacks, is someone that I followed for quite a while on Instagram and, and, and kind of he gave an intimate view of the design and creation of some of these knives he makes very, very, uh, um, not only unique and useful designs, but very, um, what am I trying to say? Intricate engineering. You know, he'd make knives uh, that he'd make maybe 20 of them and sell them to, to premium knife buyers like Jim Skelton and, and that type made completely without hardware, you know, just fitting together like a puzzle or, you know, just so just kind of an engineering genius. I think he's from Indonesia, somewhere, somewhere in the in Asia. Um, but so this was this this is the Savivi version of his vision. Uh, they we knife first took that on and uh, it's got this shark lock like lock on the back. And it's only shark lock like in its actuation. It 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 actually drops a little uh, tab down in that notch on the tang of the blade. And when you lift it up, it releases it. But uh, a unique design with a, with a fidgety and fun mechanism and a great and extremely useful blade. Good neutral er ergonomics. I'm not sure why I don't carry it more, but I got to start carrying that one more. Okay, next up from Orion Knives, David Cam uh design this and man it is a pocket gununting as far as i'm concerned it's 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 a great utility knife and it's a great weapon knife as far as i'm concerned and uh for the same reason for both you can see if you look at the spine of this it the over the overall shape of the knife is an arc cetus like whale it's like a whale uh breaching the water as it's swimming you know uh so the result you get it is an interesting knife because you get a recurve out of it basically but it's due to the shape on the back of the knife not the shape of the front of the blade the front of the blade is a straight edge but it's presented at such a downward angle due to the handle uh and the overall curve of the knife that you get this great cutting performance from that straight edge um so really really good um cutter it's thin and hollow ground 14 c 28 n it's got this beautiful amp amp amboinia wood on it and really nice uh flipping action good ergonomics i mean it's just an overall really cool knife uh three and 3.7 inch blade uh, everything about it ticks the boxes so not sure where i am not why i'm not carrying it more often uh but now that i've uh Pulled it out of the dungeon it was in, and and it gets to breathe and and show its own individuality. In when I open up my knife case, I think I'm going to be carrying this one more often. Um, I'm a sucker for. <laughs> I'm going to totally change the, the way I say this. Uh, wooden handles on knives are are uh, very appealing to me. Okay, next up. This is a Jack Wolf knife that I find myself not carrying as much as I should. Uh, this is the Pioneer, and it is based on the Sod Buster, one of my favorite fix, uh, folders to carry. Um, there we go. One of my favorite uh, traditional patterns. And he did something cool, put his own English on it, and put some facets at the end of the handle, made it a little more angular, uh, made it made it uh yet still very ergonomic a slightly more robust blade than usual is what i hear i don't know still still seems very very thin to me and and hollow ground but i guess uh slightly less so on this one because ben was interested in in the farmer style pocket knife that that put in a lot of work so he figured he'd make the geometry ever so slightly um more robust I think I know what it is. I think it's the Ultim. You know, he reached out to me when he was sending these out and said, which handle do you want? And I said, oh my gosh, Ultim. I don't have any Ultim. I need Ultim, Ultim. And he sent it out. And even though I like ochre, that's basically the color. Um, yeah, it does look like urine. I, I guess I agree with you, <laughs> you people who, who think that. Uh, I just don't go for this knife as much because I think it just doesn't... Uh, 
I think Ultima is just not my thing. I'm glad I have some in my collection just as reference. And for any Ultima, I'm going to like it on this best because it's it's uh, we don't have skeletonization. We're not seeing through it too much. Uh, um, but I don't know. I, th I guess Ultima's just not for me. Um, but this is still a great knife. I mean, look at that blade. It's an incredible blade, an incredible knife with awesome walk and talk and everything I love in a slip joint. So I need to start carrying it more and, uh, and look at it like this. It's a, it's a, it's an Ohio landscape and there's your, there's your field golden field. And there's your gray sky that you always get in Ohio. All right. Next up, this one is from petrified fish. This is the very cool Viking. I love this knife. Why do I not carry this knife? It's got incredible like green blue, um, or I should just call it hunter green micarta handle scales. And when I say hunter green, different than OD green, OD green is more, has more of a tan in it. Hunter green has more blue in it. And it's, mm, it's like that, uh, the color you, you get your 1980s Jaguar sort of. Love that color. Um, and the and the contouring, it's very, very nice in hand, feels great. That D2 blade is, or I think that's it's a K39, or no, I don't know. What is it? K300? What is it? What is it? I could probably read it if I had my oh daggum it. I should have done my research. I can't even read it. It's so small, but it's it's that it's that analogous uh, D2 steel that you get from Bowler, I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's got that incredible straight back blade. Reminds me of a Quaken a little bit. And then that uh, angled fuller is so cool. And you can actually use it to uh, reverse flick if you get your, you know, it's not, it doesn't offer too much opportunity, but if you can get in there, it's sharp enough, you can engage it and flip it open. Just a great blade in reverse grip. It looks great, feels great. Um, everything about this knife is is cool. Uh, it's my one remaining um, petrified fish. I got rid of my Victor, that um, that uh, extreme clip point. Very nice knife with the denim micarta. I gave that to uh, um, Split and Slices. Check out uh, Byron Kennedy's new channel. Will be coming out soon. Uh, second to last knife that is very awesome that i don't carry enough um and i even had it tweaked so that i'd carry it more is the spider co spidey chef um this one i had customized by mike emler i had him um change the profile and and uh put a clip on it let's see Flip that there we go and uh, so put a point on it which i really like made it let's just say stabby because uh, before it, it was like a santoku kitchen knife um, but I wanted something. Oh, I remember what it was. I saw a fisherman, uh, doing a video, some really gutsy guy in a, can, in a kayak, uh, sea fishing. And he pulls on some giant fish. It looked like it was going to capsize his whole thing. He pulls out one of these, but it has a tip on it like this. And he, uh, watched him, you know, gut the fish with his, with his spider co, um, uh, chef, Spidey Chef, and the and the one of the USPs about the Spidey Chef, beside it being uh, designed by uh, Marcin Sleesh, uh, is that it is in LC two hundred N, which is a pretty pretty darn corrosion resistant steel used in their Salt series, along with Magna Cut and H one and H two steels. Um, so yeah, that that's why you saw the fishermen using this. Uh, great. I never comment on this, but look at that's a great plunge grind and uh, termination of that edge. I think uh, I think Stasa and Jared would approve. I think you can sharpen that up pretty high uh, the way they had that set up. So what a great knife. And then also that blasted titanium handle. It has all those nice snail trails. Uh, just an just an all around excellent, excellent knife. I need to start carrying more. All right. Last up is a. A, a big little knife. I always talk about little big knives, little knives like, say, this that pack a lot of punch. Well, this is a big knife that rides like a little knife, and that's the Cold Steel Frenzy. Why do I not carry the Cold Steel Frenzy more? Uh, that's got a five and a half inch uh, hawkbill blade, very reminiscent of a Ganunting, similar to uh, the Orion here. Um, 
however, it's based on a Japanese uh, Japanese knife, some sort of helmet breacher or something, um, designed by uh, Andrew Demko, who is a uh, Japanese martial artist. He grew up, his dad had an Aikido studio, so he and his brother are total badasses uh, beyond, you know, besides just being great at designing knives and making knives. Very nice uh, G10 handle. This was a Frenzy 2. There was a 1, a 2, and a 3. Uh, the 1 had the blue handle, the 2 had the green handle, and the 3, I believe, had the light gray handle. Um, with the with the layers of black in there and the way that they contoured the handle, looks very cool. Very great grip in hand. Kind of Sukamaki-esque, except those peaks don't alternate. Your hands really, your fingers really do sink in there. But it's light. It's light and thin. So this big blade carries like a small one. Uh, if you are interested in a large folder but are hesitant because of how it's going to carry, I do suggest you check out the Frenzy. You can still get the Frenzy, and then you can also find it on the secondary market. I've seen it. I've seen it bouncing around uh, eBay. All right. Well, that that does it. I, it's been a long time since I've done a lineup like this, but I figured this uh, deserved it. Plus, they aren't giant fixed blades, so I can do it. Uh, it's the Spyderco Serrated Delica with the aftermarket titanium scales. You got your Concept Pelican, your Mass Drop, and Schwartz Perpetua. You got the uh, Artisan Accelerator, the Civivi. Uh, Vision FG, the Orion, what is the Ocetus, uh, the Jack Wolf Knives Pioneer Jack, the Petrified Fish, um, Viking, the old Spidey Chef, and of course, the Frenzy. These are knives in my collection that I have to remember and appreciate. Otherwise, why do I have them? And I have a lot of knives like that. Do you? Let's think about this. Go through your collection, start pulling out the ones. Remember why you were with them in the first place and try and rekindle that. And if you can't rekindle that, let it go. It's like Elsa says, just let it go. I'm going to try and do that too. All right. Be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives if you are seeing this on the day it drops. Otherwise, join us on whatever the nearest Thursday is, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And as always, check out our Sunday interview with a luminary from the knife world. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.